What's up, guys? I am on tour with the Jokers through August. It is the last leg of our Drive Drive tour. This is the last time to see any of this material, and we have a bunch of cities up right now that we've added. Uh, April 19th will be in Cincinnati, then Youngstown. April 21st in Chicago at the Chicago Theater. We're doing Foxwoods. We're doing Atlantic City in July. Radio City Music Hall, our first show in New York City in years. It's been pre-pandem since we've done radio uh, new york and we're doing radio city that's may 5th uh that's a sunday and we are doing that with uh joe de rosa your favorite taste buddy will be joining us on that show so if you if you haven't seen joe live you haven't seen us together come on out it's a really fun show then we're doing orlando atlanta mobile alabama and the list goes on and on grantville pennsylvania bethel new york saratoga springs even Maine, New Hampshire, Syracuse, Durham. Everything's up right now at SavileCanoComedy.com. Get the tickets. We'll see you on the road. Folks, Joe DeRosa here, your taste buddy, and you're my taste buddies, and I'd like to spend time with my buddies. Where? When I'm out on the road. Folks, I'm hitting that big open road with my new hour. I never promised you a rose garden. Where am I going to be? When am I going to be? Well, Beacon, New York on April 12th at the Town Crier Cafe. Wilmington, Delaware at the Queen Wilmington on April 19th. May 3rd, Hamden, Connecticut, and May 25th, I'll be in Newport, Rhode Island at the Jane Pickens Theater. Here's another thing, though. Where am I not doing my hour, but I'm appearing live, and you can see me do stand-up that's not part of my hour, and it's not my show, but I'm with some friends. Well, May 5th, that's where Radio City Musical, I'm with the Impractical Jokers, opening up the big show at the biggest place in the big old city we all live in. I can't wait to be there. I hope to see you for that, too. More dates are coming, people. If you want tickets to my shows, go to JoeDeRosa.com. Again, check me out also with the Jokers at Radio City Music Hall. And, of course, if you're in New York, come on down to Joey Rose's. We're open seven days a week at 1130 every morning. Great drinks, great sandwiches. As always, JoeyRoses.com. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the Hey, tasties, taste buddies, welcome to T-A-S-T-E Buds. We're here. We're doing it. We're making it happen. And Get this used to it. Is a long awaited, at least on Sal and my <laughs> yeah. part. I don't know if we've talked about this much on camera, but this is a long-awaited tournament we've been waiting to do. Yeah, I think we mentioned it on one of the last episodes, but super, I mean, we we've have. been excited for this. Yes. Because this is going to be a theme month. Yes. It's a sweet thing. We'll, we'll get back to foods, but some of these toys were so good, I would I would want to chew on them. Yeah, we we thought we always thought it'd be fun to do a, a toy tournament that's specifically focused on the 80s and 90s. Yeah. That is the... How we grew up, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was still playing with toys... And then, I mean, I went in 1990, I was 13, 14. Mm -hmm. I still, that yeah, was on the outskirts. I mean, it was more video games then. But what we're going to do is, look, we realized that when we picked the toys, we're going to name these toys right now for you guys. We realized that when we picked them, some of them were like from prior to the 80s. But we didn't go by the book about when they were invented. We, we just went by popularity and what our own experiences were from yes. both the 80s and the 90s. 90s, probably we're going to argue things we didn't play with much, but were, that were... Ubiquitous in, in the pop culture realm. Yes, yeah, things that were were relevant that men in their uh, late teens and yes. twenties, like us, still were aware of them. Let's so, put it that way. But I'll say this too: we are aware also. There's going to be things that people are saying. How'd you leave that out, blah, blah, blah. guys? You can only fit so much in. We did our best to pick the sixteen. Yeah, we could have done like a two month tournament. Yeah, of the nineteen eighties that 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 kind of that kind of covered all corners of the toy spectrum, uh, and also uh, the, the the this it's more than just the nostalgia of us growing up. The eighties and nineties are the the eighties in particular for toys is like the seventies of in Hollywood for cinema. It's like this right. is the, the, and the 60s for music. Yeah. It's like I'm, uh, they were they were innovating and in the ways. 50s and the 40s for war. Yes. Yes. Um, and anyway. the 30s for racism. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then the two, 2000 <laughs> and the 2020s for racism. So anyway, <laughs> um we picked we, so here's what we did. We realized right away that our toys that we play with the most skewed uh boy and also were a lot heavy in the like uh, action figure. We didn't want that to be the whole thing. So we ended up doing a sweet 16. We got 16 toys that encompass both action figures, uh dolls and this and that and then even ubiquitous 
je- neutral uh, the 80s toys, if you will. So let's go through the... the I'll, I'll mention what the 16 battles will be today. We want to do it one by one. Uh, no, let's do it one by one. Okay. Where do you want to start? You, you, you start. You tell me First where. one I posted was Rubik's Cube versus Simon Says. Well, I'm a Simon man myself. I like them both. If I had to choose, I probably lean Simon, but I really do like them both. I hate the Rubik's Cube. I refuse <laughs> I refuse to represent. All right. Um, well, I like Simon. So a lot of these things, I'm just going to be arguing which I like better because it's not like I don't like the other sure, thing. A lot sure. of these things are all my favorites. Sure. So it's going to be a little different in that respect, right? right. So let's talk about it. So are you taking Rubik's Cube? I, I like them both. So it's going to be hard to take one. Like, for example, I'm not going to know what to do when it comes to, uh, you know. All right. Don't say. Don't worry. Right. Don't spoil. <laughs> all right. Ready? <laughs> Time to B A T T L E buds. And these battles are at like two minutes. We got to burn through six, eight, uh, eight battles, sixteen toys. So we're gonna do them in just a couple of minutes each. Keep it moving. Steve, if you can get a timer on the screen at the top of each battle, that would help. If that's possible. Yeah. And yeah. Then and also, just reset it. Started at a two. Started over at each battle. Okay. And then these eight winners in this very episode will go against each other again. And we will come out of this episode with a final four. Next week will be the same exact thing with the 90s. The week after that will be the final four from the 80s against each other. Final four from the 90s against each other. We will net uh, a final four total. And that will be the lesson until we come out with the best 80s toy versus the best 90s toy for the best toy of the two decades. Uh, Okay. I hate the Rubik's Cube. Um, I have both on my... It's uh, a toy for... It's a toy for uh, uh, just, just utter nerds. It's a nerd. You story. can't say that. And then Simon isn't. No, it's Simon says. It's freaking Simon says. Simon, I, I, I said you didn't say Simon is a toy for children with panic disorder. <laughs> 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 Actually, doesn't it get you? It gave me. Oh, gave it gives you anxiety. Rubik's massive Cube. Anxiety. Both deal with colors. Both deal with patterns. Right. They yeah. both came out around the same time. I would venture to say Rubik's Cube is more famous than Simon. I think that's yeah. A, that's no, there easy, was a Rubik's easy. Cube cartoon and stuff. I mean, Rubik's Cube has real life tournaments to this day. I bet you Simon might too. Mind you, and you know this because mm-hmm. you uh, are one of my closest friends. Mm-hmm. I have a Rubik's Cube and a Simon on my coffee table for all to play when they enter my home. Yes, I, I own, uh, I own a Super Simon, which was the second one that came out, like the the yes. the more advanced one. I didn't. I, I never ended up effing with that. Uh. I've never taken it out of the box. I bought it about five years ago at a collectible store, and I was just like, "This is just really cool." Because I like to buy vintage board I games. I have every and stuff. one of these toys. We could have, we could have, we could have brought them and displayed them today. <laughs> you know, what? we thought of it after the it. fact. It's like you know, you it is what it, it is. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, but Rubik's cube to me, I find it. I, I don't understand how anybody's able to complete it. I don't. I literally don't understand. So here's the thing: I can do any color in under a minute. I've never gotten two colors. I have a I have a niece and a nephew that are like t- ten and thirteen that can solve them on their own. I don't understand how. I don't know if they got kicked in the head by a mule when I wasn't looking. <laughs> but the thing, if you don't know, Rubik's cube is a square, and every side is a different color, and you turn them until you get the colors that match the same size. And Simon is just green, yellow, red, and blue, and they go off one at a time. And then the next one, it's two, and you kind of keep following the pattern yeah. until to see how many times you can get the pattern correctly until you get it wrong. That one is I play to this day. I think it keeps your mental mind, your mental sharp, you know. But that one. I have anxiety. It gives me anxiety. It gives me great anxiety. Yeah. But that's kind of the space I exist in. Yeah. So it's okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I feel like what I should start doing is playing Simon as soon as I wake up in the morning. Because I usually wake up with an anxiety <laughs> stomach ache. <laughs> I feel that so it would just actually maybe it. just take me out of it for a second. To, to a different anxiety. It's a light anxiety. Yeah. But it is. It's still you still get a feeling in there. You know when you know in Simon, you're like you like so cocky when you're like red, red, blue, so yellow, red, red, blue whatever and then you're like yeah i got this yeah and sometimes you, they even helps you because it's like red 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 yellow and now you're like oh i don't even got to remember red 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 yeah yeah so now red 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 yellow i got so it's almost like the next one is my first one yeah you start playing but then all of a sudden something it happens gets wild something yeah. happens somewhere in there it's like and then your whole entire brain takes a huge yeah and then you just you hit even you even get the first one wrong. Yeah. You're like you you were hitting red, red, green, yellow for 16 times. Then you just go, uh, oh, blue. And you're like, oh shit. Well, wait, I have a question about Simon before, and then I, I have something to say about Rubik's Cube too. But was there oh look at that? That's exactly what I was just gonna ask. Was there ever a timer involved? 
That's not a timer so much as it's a counter. Okay. Was I have that? There is know. no timer, right? You can wait as long as you wait. I have I have one. I did I tell you I have two Simons, original Simons in the original box right now. That's they took my super D batteries. Simon. That's my super Simon. They were yeah. like this thick. Yeah, yeah. It did not look like it had the counter on it. It had a, a switch. The new ones are like low profile. Yeah, they made them new. But I have like the original box, like the thick big box. Yeah, yeah. I have two of those. I don't know why. Yeah, the the underside of the box is just the styrofoam. Yeah, like, right. Like the thing goes on top of yeah, the styrofoam. Yeah, yeah. But but it does. There is no timer. Meaning. I if it was throws a counter. It throws a crazy whatever at you. You have as long as you need before nope. you start. No. No, there always is a timer. You have like five seconds. Oh, it'll it'll I don't remember that. You gotta move, baby. <laughs> oh, it'll okay. Yeah. Okay. And the Rubik's Cube, I swear I swear to you this is true. The number of times my dad disassembled it for me and reassembled it. Oh, like actually took it apart. He would take it apart for me and reassemble it because I was so bad at it that I couldn't figure it so out. A lot of kids yeah. would take the stickers off and then put them all on the same thing. <laughs> That's uh, You can always tell because the kid had crooked stickers. Yeah, and the glue would run all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'd be like, get this out of my face. But, you know, so, and some of the newer ones, they took away the stickers and they made it like the plastic. Mm -hmm. And I think they went back to, I mean, you got to do stickers. Give me yeah. what we grew up with. I just saw him in the, I saw a Rubik's Cube in the airport the other night, Burbank Airport. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, no, but, I'm, I'm but, serious. Yeah, but Rubik's the Cube stand was the only no, like toy they had was no, Rubik's Cube. I know. I have. I have a few. Listen, they they then went to the like four four by fours. They went to two by twos. They yeah. did triangles. Rubik's Cube was on keychains. You remember that thing like Omni or whatever came out where it was like the the chain links. That one came out. Uh, yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. That was what it was that called was Link. Big. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That was wild. Yeah. That didn't make the 20. Anyway, my point here is I think that I think that I think Rubik's Cube is gonna win this. I think Rubik's Cube popularity wise could take it, but I think Simon is more uh, uh beloved. I think. Yeah, I I'm gonna say this. I love Simon. It's probably the one I prefer to play right now, but I will take Rubik's Cube in this battle if we if I had to. I do right. think I do think it's it's going to be, I think it's the quintessential lady store. I think it might beat almost everything. Do we want to see who took it now? or do we I think we let moving? everyone vote. Right, we let's just go moving. back to this. Okay, thing. next battle. Yes. Hot Wheels versus My Little Pony. Well, <laughs> obviously I'm Hot Wheels. Right. But if I needed to, I could argue for My Little Pony. Yeah, my <laughs> sister. So I had a sister two and a half years younger than me. Uh -huh. That was my closest in age sister. And so all of these uh, girl skewing toys where I was, I had access to were in my house. Right. Now, I didn't own my own pony, but I visited the stable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I will tell you this. Here's where this is going to be interesting. Um, yes. So, My Little Pony were these plastic ponies where you could brush them, but they had real tails and hair. You could brush them. They all had colors, and I think they had different personalities they and had powers sense too they had oh, yeah. sense my friend's sister had my little ponies and i would always smell the tail it always smelled good it yeah. smelled like like a like a like a perfumey <laughs> or sometimes a cinnamon or you know i want to i want to immediately I'm, i don't even mean to, be, to jump out but when we said sense i then i thought of strawberry shortcake then i thought of Those rainbow bright rainbow bright and then i thought of hello kitty and i think i need to apologize in advance to all the Rainbow Bright heads, the Strawberry Shortcake heads, and the Hello Kitty heads. Hello Kitty might have been, should have been in this. Uh, I don't consider Hello Kitty a toy. I consider it more of a brand. You know, I like that. Yeah, I like so, that. It makes me feel better. Yeah. It's like trolls. It's like, we you know. said we were going to stay away from dolls, although Rainbow Bright had action figures. Rainbow Maybe Bright Strawberry, was cool. Rainbow Bright. But we, we, but, we but picked two seminal dolls. She couldn't, she couldn't mess with... Rainbow Bright couldn't mess with some of the Titans. We've got I think come she up this could, thing. dude. In the eighties, I think you're forgetting the weight she threw around back then. Now, My Little Pony, I find. I mean, it's it scented me? ponies just isn't pumping it, chemicals into kids' it nostrils. It seem <laughs> <laughs> did no, no part. I bet you those weren't even BPA free. Am I wrong? Do, do, do the ponies not have a slight flirtatious energy to them? <laughs> the oh, way yeah. their heads are tilting and their their tr their tri tone yeah, hair. They wanted the kids to want to have sex with those ponies. <laughs> And I'll tell you what happened. Those 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 kids grow to be those kids grow to be bronies. 
And bronies today, I think, want to have sex with the ponies. How do you name a pony Bay Breeze? <laughs> That's a cocktail. How do you not? I would argue Butter Pop. Wait, are these originals or are these like 2024 these ponies? These are new ones. Let's go to original ponies, please. Um, I will tell you this. Here's where I think this is going to be a little difficult. Hot Wheels is how can you... I mean, to this day... I mean, it wasn't from the 80s and it still lives on today. But another one that might be a titan... Because girls play with the cars too. Plus, you got the guys. But but the, just oh, let alone the sets, the sets they came with, not just the yeah. toys themselves, but the car wash. Let me throw the gauntlet the down. Wash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me throw the gauntlet down for Hot Wheels. You're doing loop de loops in your living room Christmas morning. Yeah. The, the, the tracks were nuts and the variety of cars. Like, dude. Just the standard Hot Wheels were awesome because they made the coolest cars into the Hot Wheels. Then you get into the subcategory. They have like DC Comics Hot Wheels where it's like the Joker Mobile yeah. and the Penguin and whatever. There's, there's, there. I think there's wrestling ones. Like there, it's I'll wild. It the branding. Yeah. One of my, one of my, my showcase pieces was a '57 Chevy with flames in the front with the, with the hood opened. <laughs> okay, it was a little heavier. Uh, but it went faster because it was heavier. Right. But I also had a Datsun. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So, and, and what I like too is the price point. When we were oh. little, you get, you get in there sometimes for 79, 99 cents. 99 cents. Dollar 29, things like that. Do you remember when they, didn't they make Hot Wheels that could damage? They did. Yeah, they did. You yeah. hit them on the door and yeah. it would flip almost like the yeah. He-Man battle yeah. chest. Yes. They could, da that, that blew my socks off. Yeah. Um, and, but I did tell you, I think they went the from carrying cases. Oh, oh, I had the suitcase. Yeah, I still had yeah, it. Yeah. And, and that's Sabrina wild. School. So the, they used to went from die cast metal. Then they started making them plastic, though. But let's not get into the, the uh, horrible yeah. days. There it is, where you could have a, a, a fatal wreck with yeah. a Hot Wheels. I mean, it's wild. But here's, here's where I'm going to say about that, why I think the pony might be a wild horse. <laughs> no pun intended. Men. I know. Men today love My Little Pony bronies. And I don't know if that came later in life. Well, they liked it back then, but I'm saying I think Pony is almost like a neutral toy as much as it is what you would think a girl toy because, as you know, there are full subcultures of people that gather today at conference centers all across the United yeah, States I in mean, Holiday Inns, uh, yeah. and they dance to EDM and show off their brony pony. Yeah, I, I, I will say, for all I know, there could be, there hot, is. <laughs> there could be hot Wheels cons. I don't yeah. know if there are. I've never heard of one. I would think that mostly if you're collecting for Hot Wheels, you're going to toy cons where there are going to be Hot Wheels dealers. My Little Pony has a full, as you said, uh, counterculture, subculture, whatever you want to call it, devoted to it, uh, which, you know, which, which, which can only probably be said also of, of one other thing on this list, which we will be getting to. But, so, uh, wait, who are you picking in this winter? Who are you picking? Hot Wheels. Okay. I want to say... I'm going to say, I don't know how big the pro, the brony contingent is these it's days. It's big. Because I mean, those people that are our fans are going to vote Pony over Hot Wheels. Yeah. I'm still going to say Hot Wheels as well. I'm going to agree with you there. Okay. But I wouldn't be surprised if Pony comes in. All right. Let's go. Next battle. This one, I mean, if, you, if you're standing, sit down. <laughs> if you're standing, sit down. If you're in the car, pull over. <laughs> this is, what is it? Lego versus Barbie. <laughs> oh, my God. Which is almost insane because one of them has to be eliminated. And I would argue if they were on opposite sides of brackets, they'd both be in the finals. So this is like a one seed versus a one seed up top. I mean, what can you say, man? The Barbie movie just swept the nation. Lego's got a new movie out in theaters every other year. We're talking These about their popularity now. We should say this. And honestly, the people on, on, on Twitter, they don't realize what we want. But I'm talking about if we could isolate 80s. Right? Sure, because I don't want to be like, well, look at the look at where Lego is now. Lego is like a, I mean, it's it's a it's a if Le Lego goes under, it's like bees. I think the world stops. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I but Legos back then, I was I was playing with the larger Legos. Now I'll say this, like the I will take Barbie in the battle. Yeah, I will take Barbie in the battle, not just for optics. <laughs> <laughs> I will take her in the battle. Because I never liked Legos. I found them to be meticulous. Uh, I, I, I find that I, I have always found the instructions to be confusing. Uh, and I thought, this is my opinion about why I always thought Legos kind of stunk. 
I, I admire them now that I'm older and I see what people build with them and all that stuff. And now you got Lego Wars with Will Arnett and all that stuff. Like it is, it is interesting. You ever watch to that me show? Mm -mm. <laughs> it, Unreal. It's interesting to me now. Like I, I have an admiration for Legos. Yeah. But to me, Legos, Legos were like trigonometry. There was nothing fun about it. It was like it was like solving this math problem, and at the end of it, all you had was your answer. Yeah. And it was like, but what do I do with this? You can't play with it. <laughs> okay. Well, There's nothing me... like fun to play with because you're afraid it's going to like smash apart or something. Yeah. Let me um let me give you a little bit of my Legos eighty experience. It was nothing like that. I didn't get the sets. I didn't build small and follow instructions. I had, and I don't mean the mega blocks they have now. I had the vintage. You know the vin. Can you just have been vintage like vintage eighties Lego? Like it wasn't the small sets. I had the larger, like larger, colorful blocks. Blo put it in blocks, maybe. Um, and I just did free form. Yeah, you see, like the the one on the left there. Maybe that. Yeah, click on that. Let's get a picture of that. I had those. Those always to me it was the, looked the like they for, were for people with a learning issue. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were like Lego. They, there they are. That's the that's the quintessential right yeah. there, baby. The, they were the, too big. Like, there was something that no, didn't but, look but, right about that. No, but there were no them. instructions. That was just go do whatever you want. See, that was that was my Lego experience. I, I had too? a bucket of them, and one day I made a bridge. One day I made a castle. One day I made a car. One day I made a fort. One day I made. I <laughs> also it, this was. I'm glad you that's brought it. this up. This was also something I disliked about Legos. When when a kid would dump that pile onto the bed, and be like, let's just build whatever. I it love, looked trashy to me. Oh, it looked no, like there was it. no nothing matched. Everything was a different I, color. I love brick. that. I I hated it. I love dumping it and being like, "This is a blank canvas right now." I even love the I sounds that that specific plastic would make. It would almost be like a jingle when they all hit. Uh, oh, I no. loved it. Now, I now, loved now. it. Now let's move into Barbie. Yeah, we're driving cars. Yeah, we're living in dream houses. Yeah, She's I mean, look. <laughs> Every doll. I think I saw her ride on My Little Pony once, even. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's you know. tough. It's tough. You got real hair. You got plastic hair. You got Malibu. You got you got all sorts. I of will go as far as to say this, and I don't just say it because I'm picking Barbie in the battle. You're crimping hair. I was jealous when I would see the Barbie toys <laughs> at my next door neighbor's house. You didn't pick, up, pick yourself up a Ken? No, because I didn't just, you know, you, but, you couldn't fly solo with Ken. Yeah, my, but again, I had them all, and she had the dream house, and we had the pool, and we had all that stuff. And, my and hats I, I off, played with her. My hat's off to Barbie as a toy. This was the first toy I ever saw where you're like, I think these toys might have sex at night when, <laughs> when, I, when I go to bed. They cleared, the, <laughs> they cleared that right up with no genitals, though. The, um, no, I honestly, my next door neighbors were, were named Chrissy and Casey growing up. Very lovely people, but they had Barbies. And because they were, next, they were next door neighbors, you know, you become best friends with next door neighbors when you're a little kid. And you go over to the next door neighbor's house a lot. And I was over their house a lot. And I always see their Barbies and all that stuff. And I was like, kind of jealous. Like, I was like, this looks like, like, like. This is got, They got a lot going on here with Barbie. I made you feel like an adult because you had access to everything an adult had. Yeah, you had a house, you had a pool, you had a, you had a, uh, you had a, a, a camper. Yeah, you had. I mean, you had a dog, you had a boyfriend, you had friends, you had Skipper. I am curious. We got to go to the next battle. I'm cur. I don't. I am Team Barbie, but I I do not have even a, 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 a even a slight estimate as to who's going to take. What's this. interesting this is, is that, a tough battle. What's interesting is the people voting. We we specified on the polls that we're battling '80s toy. I don't think people are going to isolate the '80s experience. And since Barbie and Lego are more prominent than ever right this second, it'll be interesting to see who takes yeah. that. What's next? Next, baby, we got. Transformers versus G.I. Joe. Baby. Here we go. Who do you want? <sighs> this is like uh, when, they, when they had to cut the kid in half for me. <laughs> <laughs> I rock. I was so into both of these things. This is like, you know, I mean, you, between this, these two, Star Wars, like He-Man and WWE, those are my top five. I mean, All if right. you're talking boy skewed toys, I mean, oh my God, this is tough, but I know who I like better, but I'm happy to take either. So, so you can have the preference. So I had probably like 30 Transformers. I had like probably 100 G.I. Joe. I had the, the G.I. Joe vehicles, if you will. 
Yeah. And I had the Cobra Commander and I had the, what was his name? Destro? What's his name? This guy's talking, you're talking about cutting a kid in half and you don't know Destro's name? Well, I said Destro. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just been a minute. Platinum so. Head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Later Gold. And I, I mean, I had the things where I would thumbtack a yarn there and then run it over there and then I'd, I'd make them zip line across my entire house. So you're going with G.I. Joe's? <laughs> I don't know. I'm to I have to talk it out right now. It's like I'm in therapy. <laughs> My original Optimus Prime, in fully intact and in mint condition, is sitting in my den right now. Is 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 in my den right this second. Uh, oh my God, the GI Joe aircraft carrier! I will help. It, es you. it escaped me. I will. I will push you to decide because I would say if I had to, if I had to pick one, I would go Transformers. Yeah, Transformers to me are. It's the toys are all of the toys are awesome, and I could easily argue for G.I. Joe because my best friend growing up, Scott, had everything. He was a G.I. Joe freak. Every Christmas, every birthday, oh, anything. he was a G.I. Joe freak. <laughs> he, all he ever got was G.I. Joe stuff. And he had in his basement. He had the aircraft carrier? Yes. You had to be rich for that. But but listen to me. In his basement, he had a rug on one side of his basement, like a, like a long rectangular rug. It was designated? Designated. G.I. Joe on one side, Cobra on the other side. And he had everything. Full on and he was a he was a really organized, like nerdy kind of kid. He had every accessory, every he, everything. Could you, go was in, perfect. could you go in there and run buckshot on those, or was he precious with them? You had to get permission to go down and play GI Joe, but but he was in. But once it. you were in there, you could on your yeah, own. Yeah, he was like, let's let's go. Take the the the, uh, the uh, what was it? The, <laughs> what do you call the thing? This land and sea. The uh, yeah, the hovercraft. Yeah, the hovercraft. Yeah, yeah. The hovercraft. That was that was my favorite with the depth charges. But I will tell you, I love the Transformers packaging. No. Well, here's the thing with Transformers. Transformers for me, and this is is as much as as I'm uh, uh, accrediting uh, GI Joe for being awesome. Transformers for me, I don't. There were few things. There's another one on this list. When we get to it, I'll say it. There were few things that when I saw the commercial. Because Transformers both. came out, the toy was first, then the cartoon. Yeah. Or they were right up against each other. Yeah. So I saw those toys before the cartoon came out. When I saw that, I was like, it it reconfigured my brain. Like I I, yeah. I, I was like, I have to have it. I yeah. I must have it. Yeah, you're right. So you're right. There was more of a excitement and demand and and an actual demand. When Transformers, like you couldn't get, you couldn't get an Optimus Prime. Like GI Joe, there might have been a couple of guys here or there that were tough to get. I would even cut the things and send away for the guys. Right. But like, you kind of could buy them at will. Whereas when Transformers dropped, it was like there was a rush to get them. There was a rush, and you're right. I do remember. I had these comics, by the way. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Transformers one, versus GI Joe. They didn't give you a clear winner on this. It was an ongoing series, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, the uh, um, but. But, um, and it, by the way, it wasn't like, I think it was like, you know, G.I. Joe and the Autobots fought Cobra and the Decepticons. Oh, uh, you know it I mean? wasn't like brand versus brand. I don't think so, no. But, um, I, uh, you were right. I do remember when there was a dearth, like you couldn't, they were flying off the shelves. Oh, we used to call, we used to call that for that in Nintendo games. I remember when Mike Tyson's punch out came out. We, I had a, I had a list. We would call all over now. Do you have it? Do you have it in? They wouldn't. Some places would hold it. Some places wouldn't. They had it in. We would jump in the car. I would race to it. Um, that would Super Mario too. Yes. And my yes. My friend got it for Christmas. <laughs> you couldn't get it. I remember talking to him on Christmas Day. Remember you call your friends on Christmas Day? Would you yeah. get? Would you get? Would you get? So much better. Yeah, yeah. And I called my friend and he goes, "Dude, I got Mario too." Jack and we were one? like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Mario it was like, too. when, we, let's open up your date book. Yeah, when, yes. when am I coming over? All day. Yeah, yeah. We, oh, by the way, we just as a matter, we kept off anything uh, board game or video game related. No electronics. We might do that in the future. We might do a Genesis, Nintendo type of thing. But that when was the cartoons off. of these toys came out, they were both amazing. They you are got, fantastic. I own full sets of both shows. Two, ta two taglines. G.I. Joe is? American Hero. Real American Hero. Right, but uh, now, now you know. Now you know, and knowing he's half the battle. Yeah. Transformers. More than meets Robots the eye. Robots in disguise. Robots Transformers. Disguise. More than meets the eye. Yes. Two very good. I, this is the last very thing I'll things. say about both these toys. Uh, Transformers as a toy and what it could do in turning it into the thing uh, and the, the, the aesthetic of it and blah, blah, blah. 
league leagues, in my opinion, above G.I. Joe. Yeah. However, G.I. Joe's versatility and character Depth set of catalog. And, yeah, and vehicles. It's hard to compete with. It is, it's, it's, it's hard crazy. to compete with. This is like the Yankees versus the Yankees. Yeah. Uh, I will. I think Transformers is going to win because of their popularity right now. I don't know what G.I. Joe is in popularity now, but because of the movies, again, I think people are voting on Twitter and they're not thinking back to them. But I will say... I can tell you this. I'll tell you real quick. The G.I. Joe and... Because you know I buy a lot of movies and stuff. The G.I. Joe and Transformers cartoon full series of the original 80s runs, yeah. they have they have not been released on Blu-ray. They're only on DVD, and they have retained their value. They still sell at like $75 for the wow. set. Like most stuff from then, that DVD especially, it's like... It, it, I wish you dabbled can't give it more away. with marijuana because I could come over on a, on a lazy day Lazy Sunday, wake up, and and then we could just like get really high and just watch and transform. Well, I'll tell you what I could do with you. Just watch it without being high. <laughs> well, there's that. I was gonna say I could, I could also, I could drink some wine, then take like a little bit of weed. Let's do it, and it evens me out. I would do that in a second. Yeah, why don't we dabble with all of these? Yeah. yeah. All right, we're, we're, we're a little right. behind. Um, I I will just my my part in comments. I had better times and more memories with GI Joe because I had. 60 G.I. Joe with the vehicles and I and my Transformers did not zip line. I had relationships with G.I. Joe. I had people getting jumped. I had, you know, I, I had just it was a lot more fighting and options, but revolutionary Transformers. It was revolutionary. So it's tough. I've got I, more of an emotional stake in Transformers. Transformers yeah. was the first cartoon to make my friends cry because Optimus Prime gets killed in the movie. Yeah. Uh you I go it's the first thing that pissed me off. When I found out they killed Optimus Prime, I was like them and f that show i'm not watching it anymore right you know i i, I never had that level of an emotional stake in gi yeah. joe uh, uh also trans is having their moment right now so i think if people read fast they might <laughs> i right. think transformers is probably gonna win that one all right let's go let's keep it moving keep it moving what number battle is this i don't know want to go he-man versus star wars my friend this is a shame for he-man it's a shame because I feel like people are going to attach the world of the movies of Star Wars to the toy. I still think Star Wars is probably the greatest toy. You talk about coveting something and, you know, I mean, Jesus, I you could get nine Luke Skywalker because you wanted them in every outfit. Look, there's, there's, uh, you know, we I'm going to be... We didn't do any backstory on any of these because we, we should have made these two part ups. We should have made it two parts. It might end up being a two part app, to be honest. It's just, we got a ways to go here. On this yeah. Panel. So, because we didn't do any, but these are, these are the topics ripe for backstory. Well, let's, well, can well, you pick up what was that last thing you had up on this, Steve? About the, is the article? Sorry, uh, Joe. The resulting series, He Man and the Master Universe, debuted through the Barda syndication. Okay. First syndicated show to be used on a toy. There's the reason I didn't feel the need to go into a lot of backstory with a lot of these is there are full documentaries out there yeah. devoted to this. Yeah. I'm not, going to say anything that, that people probably don't already know. Yeah, we're assuming, uh, but, we're assuming you know, that our audience yeah. knows what these things but, are. But, okay, look, this <laughs> oh, is a tough God. one. There's no... I'm going to say this. I'm going to I'm gonna take this. Ready? I'm going to tell you who I'm it's taking. Because also, you're talking about a six-inch figure or five-inch figure versus... Can I tell you who I'm taking in this? Yeah, you're taking Star Wars. Star Wars is your to the, to the end. I'm not taking Star <gasps> Wars. Here's why. No. Here's why. Even with the Millennium and all that? Listen, Star Ewok Wars Village was like it's amazing. How about this? Blows my mind. I had Ewok Village, but I also had Castle Grayskull, and I also had what was Skeletor's Castle? Great, uh, Snake Mountain. Snake Mountain. I had it with the friggin' with the microphone. microphone. Oh god. This Jesus. is why I'm taking Masters of the Universe. Everybody knows my Trap love for Tua. Star Wars. I got, I got a Death Star tattooed on the back of my arm. I am taking He Man. Why? Because for the last month, I've been in a He Man rabbit hole, yeah, rewatching uh, the old show. And buying some of the some of the re-release figures because they started re-releasing them in the old packaging. You know what, dude? And dude, I've been watching videos of like the history of He-Man toys. The toys, in hindsight, it is no contest. They started getting bonkers after the first or second run. They started making characters that like you know the guy with the eyes that came out. In the beginning, yeah. they had Mantena. like the guy. They had the side clock. In the beginning, they had that guy. The, the, the many stuff. faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. many faces. Yeah, yeah, right. They had that, but then they started going bonkers. Do you remember the? the did you remember the transformers anything? that you winded back and they they went yeah. forward and jumped and they were transformed? Yeah, those were oh, awesome. My God, I would punch my did grandmother in the teeth for that. Did you want any toy? <laughs> was there ever a toy on planet Earth that kids at 
at our age, boys our age at that time want it more than the slime pit. When they oh when they released God. the slime pit, my oh mom my wouldn't God. buy it for me. I had it. She goes, That's trash oh. and that's disgusting. I'm not oh. buying it for her. And the same kid that got Super Mario 2 got the slime pit for his birthday. You should check in on where he is today. Hopefully not good. <laughs> The, sli the slime pit was the best thing that ever happened to me. It's amazing. <laughs> it's the best thing. I tried to buy one a week ago you on eBay. No. You can. Brand new. They are $800. Sealed? He's sealed in by, the box. By the way, that... You're not getting ooze in that. You're not getting slime in that. Uh, that thing is. That thing is. I think this. I've seen collectors hold up a pouch of slime and go, "It's look, you're still in well, there." I'm you sure it's it. gonna live forever. Yeah. But um, but it's probably as chemicals. But dude, now that the, I think the, of it. The, the the Skeletor's vehicle with the spider legs. Remember that thing where mm -hmm. you would push it and the spider legs would move around. Yeah, go like they would go like that. Snake put, Mountain at the microphone that Snake distorted Man. your voice. How about how about what was his name? Cringer. What was his name? Cringer turned into Battle Cat. Mm -hmm. Cringer turned to Battle Cat. He yeah. was purple suede, bro. No, no, no. Cringer Battle Cat's green with the yellow stripes. Battle purple Cat. suede is is Skeletor's pa is Panthor. Pan Panthor, Panthor. Yeah, yeah. Panthor was purple suede. I know. Dude. There's <laughs> elements of Prince in there. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. A brand new. How is that rated? You uh, condition used. A used, how is it used and still in the package? A used team in not, the package. It's not. That's in the grading casing. Oh, no. It's inside the, that's in a, that's in a, no. that's in a, a, a casing around the thing. There's a, they, they put an extra plastic thing around it. That's no, no, a, but it's, it's used. Oh, and, I don't know. 2000, well, 2000 bucks for a He-Man. <laughs> still in the package. I've tried to find, I've tried to find original figures that are still sealed and like the cardboard's falling apart and stuff like you that. You know, this doesn't exist anymore. There's no toy right now that is going to be worth money in 30 or 40 years. No. I don't believe so. No. Because this thing has become a thing. Like all things, now collectors understand, right? Like we didn't know. We didn't know back then. Could you imagine if we knew? I still have everything we're going to talk about today. Uh, uh, G.I. Joe, Star Wars, Transformers, Voltron, and He-Man. I still have them. I have a bin in my mom's attic. I am all of, of the opinion. That He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the original toy line that went from 83 to 88 also a or whatever. Also cartoon. Yeah. I am of the opinion, and I say this as a diehard Star Wars fan, that is the greatest toy line that has ever existed. So if He-Man was against... So He-Man's your number one in this Sweet 16. This is the... Yes. This is the only toy line... <sighs> I, talked, I love the commitment. I talked in all seriousness with Jay about this once on yeah. Bonfire. Yeah. Big Jay. We talked about this where we both said, like, I could go into a room and play with He-Man toys right now. Like, like yeah. if you set me into a room with these right now, I could play with them yeah. and, like, have fun. Also, still. Was, <laughs> I mean, his muscles yeah. had muscles. I mean, He it's, was shredded. He had, like, a 40-pack And the name alone, He-Man. He, it's Shira. hilarious. Also, don't... Shira's... I just got the Shira... Uh, don't sleep on Orc series, too. Orco. Orco. D wasn't, uh, didn't you, like, pull the zip and he, like, went... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. They started innovating... They innovated He-Man in a way that they did not innovate Star Wars. Star Wars was awesome, but it was awesome because you were recreating the movie. He-Man started innovating in ways where they started having to put shit from the toys into the cartoon. Right. I'll tell you what. Like, you know, why? Like, when they did the battle armor one, yeah, battle like, armor. that, like, then they did, like, they did, like, all the alternate, like, like, fake faker, which was, like, the blue He-Man. Yeah. It was, I, like, the imposter. By the stuff. later ones, I, I was not collecting those, but I look back now sometimes, and I'm like, wow, this is, this went on and on and on. Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's, it's hard. I think Star Wars is probably gonna win it, though. Um, and I, I can't discount how I felt about Star Wars. I had an X-Wing. I had a New York Village. It was amazing. It really was amazing. So I, it's a tough one. But maybe Star Wars, you know what they did? They ended up cutting you off at the knees. No pun intended. But bend your elbows. Bend your knees. I mean, you know, they could have innovated later in the line. Now, I, I, that's part of the charm, though. Yeah. But I, you couldn't make them fight like you can make G.I. Joe fight. G.I. Joe had so many points of articulation. G.I. Joe was definitely the most articulate of these figures that we've talked about so far star wars again look i still have my original tie fighter hanging from the ceiling in one of the rooms in my house like Bad at. i have a ton of star wars figures still they're awesome that's figures tough. but they're awesome f that's that's what they are that's the distinction here they're awesome figures there's no part of me that still wishes i had an ewok village because i don't know we know what i'm I got one if you want to borrow it but i swear to god 
I want a goddamn Castle Grayskull as an ornament in my home. I know. It looks awesome. It's awesome. That drawbridge mouth. Yes. And the trap door. You're always going to fall for it. You turn in, you see it like this. We should make a trap door in here. <laughs> Just turn it. Goes out. Um, I, yeah, man. Look, I, I think Star Wars is going to win. I understand the benefits here. Was Star Wars a cartoon? Because He-Man was. They made car- well, they, they made they two need cartoons. Of, the well, now they have a bunch, but back in the eighties, there was droids no. and Ewoks. Perhaps because Star Wars is originally from the seventies, and they kept with no articulation that we don't yearn. I don't know. Look, monetarily, it's the most successful toy line of all time. Yeah. Star Wars. I mean, it, I mean, maybe next to Barbie would be the only competitor. <laughs> but but it's it's the money that 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 those toys yeah. made. George Lucas is is a is as rich as he is because. He allowed the studio to keep his points on Star Wars, but said, "I want the, I want the, the, I want the merchandise deal to be in my favor." And they were like, "Who cares about the merchandise?" And he knew. Big problem, people. Big problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, I think Star Wars is going to win because He, he- Man, it, to my knowledge, is not at the forefront of anything right no, now. No, no, it's still Kevin Smith just dropped He Man uh, Revolution. What? Se- series second oh, really? season. Mm-hmm. Oh. It was awesome. Well, not like so, I mean, but not like Star Wars. But but I'll tell you this: because He Man is not as prevalent as Star, there's not a lot of hate. There's a lot of hate on Star Wars right now. So people have, might vote with their hearts about the the the, the, the franchise. Should be interesting. This should be interesting. All right, this could have been one where we invited like Soder and Jay. We could have had like a ra- we, this could have been a, 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 a an Algonquin roundtable. <laughs> I mean, we could have had we could have had like a ten episode series here that would have been really culminating in like a live show. I know we have a plan on how this is going to unfold bracket wise, but I'm curious to see if it actually unfolds that way because I feel like this 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 might be the beginning of a new podcast. I know. <laughs> All right, let's let's keep it moving. Uh, let's double back the other way. Uh, there's three more battles left. Let's go to Cabbage Patch Kid versus Teddy Ruxpin. Now I will take. If it's all the same to you, Cabbage Patch in this, only because I had a Cabbage Patch kid. I never had a Teddy Rucks bit. My sister had a Teddy Rucks. I had a Cabbage Patch, and I had a Kusa, if that's what they call it. What the hell's a Kusa? I think it's like when they became out with their own pets, and they were animals, but the animals were their size. They're like cats. Can you look that up for me, babe? Kusa? K-O-O-S-A? Cabbage Patches were like just just kind of like settling in, in their popularity. They dropped Kusas, and everybody stabbed each other again. People stabbed each other for cabbage no, patch. That's not, that's not what K O S A. Put cabbage patch kusa. I think it's called the kusa. I might be wrong. Could be a. All right, guys. You know I love Factor. I'm a customer. Uh, I get my deliveries. I have the app, and uh, it's real simple. You just go in. You click a button. You pick whatever meals you want. There's like 30, 40 different meals. They have juices. They have smoothies, and they just get delivered. Uh, you know, weekly, and uh, you can pause whenever you want, and they're ready in two minutes. They come fresh, never frozen. Um, they're just really convenient for someone with my lifestyle. I travel a lot. I don't really cook. I work long hours. And I found uh, that for me, it, it's just a, I really benefit from them. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to eat in two minutes. Choose from the weekly 35 options. I wasn't even reading the copy and I knew this stuff. They got calorie smart options, keto, protein plus, vegan and veggie. They even have uh, gourmet meals. They got filet mignon, some shrimp, some truffle butter, uh, asparagus, no fuss, uh, no mess meals. Eliminates the hassle of prepping, cooking, cleaning up. Just simply uh, heat it up and savor the good stuff. Head to factormeals.com slash tastebuds50 and use code tastebuds50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code tastebuds50 at factormeals.com slash tastebuds50. You get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. All right, guys, we got 420 approaching soon, which means shout out to all the marijuana enthusiasts. Uh, Mood is a product that uh, is with us here on the podcast. And uh, since they started, I've been I've been using Mood. Uh, if you don't know anything about it, uh, it's THC made from hemp. It's federally legal. You could order it online. I like it. It's it's just it's it's it helps me relax. It calms me down. I'm always on the go, go, go. The reason that I even, uh, you know, partake in any of that is always to just wind down at the end of a long day. 
and just turn off and be able to relax, get to sleep, uh, which it really hits the spot. And then what they do is they they brand all, they name all their different strains by mood. And so you can kind of look to see what you're looking for and tailor it uh, for the mood that you want. Puts an end to guessing games with the federally legal forms of THC. Extracted from hemp plants, all products are regularly tested in third-party labs and sourced from small family farms and pesticide-free. Uh, Great for both beginner and veteran users. Uh, great tasting gummies they also have. They have flour, they have pre-rolls, and so much more. Celebrate 420 exactly how you want to with Mood. Get 20% off your first order plus a free THCA pre-roll at hellomood.com with promo code TASTEBUDS. That's hellomood, M-O-O-D.com, and use promo code TASTEBUDS. There it is. Kusa, oh, yeah. that's terrifying. It, it wasn't, though. It was <laughs> It was, it's a basically a cat. Oh my god, it's so scary looking. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they had this. Here's the thing with Cabbage Patch. Okay, I'm gonna go. Cabbage, I think Cabbage Patch might be as big as it was. The, as far as the '80s go, I think it was the biggest toy in the '80s. I really do. It might not be everlasting. It was big, like, but it was big the way Beanie Babies are big. No, big. I don't think so. Oh, you know, I might. Beanie not, Babies were. Huge. I don't know enough about Beanie Babies. To but I mean, on. you know, like, 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 look, Tickle Me Elmo was huge, but like, it's it's this was yeah. This was a nation fighting, as was Tickle Me. This was a nation fighting, not even at Christmas time, year round, to get these damn things. They they had the they were genius in the fact that they said no two were alike. Yeah, that's bonkers. I don't know if that's a lie or not. Can we look that up? I don't think it was a no lie. Two, I never no saw two, two were alike, the same. and they had their own name and birth certificate. Yeah, yeah. And they were all tattooed on their ass. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. I mean, I remember mine. And nothing my, smelled better than a cabbage patch kid. And they smell again, <laughs> they smell like a baby, a baby. They smell like baby powder. Yeah. Each one is an individual hand stitched work of soft sculpture delivered by local artists. They are carefully born in our Cleveland, Georgia cabbage patch. No two originals are that is such a genius idea. Yeah. To the fact that, like, look, if you're a if you were a you know 15, 10, 12 years, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how old, I don't know where the age of disinterest would start with Cabbage Patch, but I know that whenever, when what year did they come out? I knew that I was an age where I wanted one so bad. My I sister got, got one. one. I, I can tell you when they came out because my grandfather still lived with me when we got, when I got mine. Yeah. And he died when I was in second grade. So they came out when I was in first or second grade. So like 80, 84, somewhere in there. Says 83. Look at this. Yeah. They became the, the most successful new doll introduction in the toy industry's history. By the way, my grandfather uh, was kind enough the morning I got the Cabbage Patch Kid to mock me all morning long <laughs> and go, did you get your little doll? Did you get your little... All morning long. It was good. It's probably why I am the way well, I am. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> my sister had one, then I had one, and then we each got a Kusa, right? I don't remember my guy's name. I feel bad about that. But I didn't get it at the same time as my sister. So there was only one patch, cabbage patch, in the household for a little bit first. And that one will never leave my memory. His name was Haywood Thurman. He was born on April 1st. <laughs> Haywood Thurman. I wish I could remember sounds the name. Like, literally sounds like a linebacker. I was going to say it sounds like a, like a senator from the South. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, wait a minute. I wish I could. I can't remember the name of mine. They all had weird <laughs> names, though. It was never like Billy, right? Yeah, I don't. I wish I knew my other one, but Haywood Thurman is that's such a great, a great yeah. name. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I should use that as like an alias. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. They always had names like that. It was never yeah. like Jake. Yeah. You know. Right. No. I. Yeah. As far as I recall, as well. Yeah. Haywood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another thing they did that's bonkers. They started selling premature children. Wait, what? what? That was the next thing that blew everyone's mind. They called them preemies, which I didn't understand what that meant. Now, what they meant, I believe, was they were they were half the size of a couch patch, and they were more like just born right couch. They were called preemies. It was they were as in just as much demand, but preemies means premature, I believe. I mean that that would that seems like. No, I clearly didn't mean a premature born. Like uh, I know they didn't. They didn't like, that they didn't like came out of the couch patch on the ground a couple of weeks earlier. Look at this, forty five bucks full in box. Do you want to talk about something that just lost value? No, no, no. But this could be. They were selling. They sell this now. They were selling these in the two thousands. This isn't Wait, from. They an, were. Oh yeah. Wait, are they still making cabbage? They, patch they kids? might be. Are they? Can we get a, a good eye on that? And then we'll just find out after that what year the premies came out. Preemies? 
So they waited about a year and a half, two years, and they There's dropped the, the bomb on us. Premies came in like little sleep sacks. And by the way, <laughs> if it wasn't for Cabbage Patch Kids, we would have never been blessed with Garbage, garbage Pail Kids. kids. Which was just amazing, man. One of the best to, to this talk day, about, one of the best things ever. Talk about two things hitting perfectly in your life. You're like six. You want a doll that smells like butterscotch and baby powder. You get it. You get a little older, like two years later, and you get these cards. It's kids puking and popping their zits. It's it was perfect. There was literally like a cabbage <laughs> patch with used needles hanging out of them. <laughs> a garbage pail. Sorry, garbage pail. I I actually still have all of mine. Original. I don't have any of mine anymore. I, I bet you you can still buy these today. I bet you. Well, maybe. Oh, you see, thirty fifth anniversary. They redid them. Yeah, they're great. And I, I never really took them off. They're stickers, but that's another genius thing. They're cards, but they're stickers. But I never took off the sticker. I kept them as cards. Uh, they're going. Uh, I mean, look, dude. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Marty Gras. <laughs> Is a fu- a man in full drag. It's amazing. <laughs> He's in stilettos, heels, fishnets, Nicky Hickey. So, <laughs> and by the way, the joke of that card of Mardi Gras is, this is a man that will try to have sex with you if you go to New Orleans. That is the full joke of that card. This is insane that this was made for children. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. It's great. It ex- it exposed us to to different people early. <laughs> uh, locale, losing faith. Oh my God, go back to losing faith. There's a child strapped to a bomb that got dropped out of an airplane. She is tied to an atom bomb oh that was just dropped from an airplane. She's gagged and bound to the bomb that is free falling. She cannot speak and she is sweating profusely with the look of absolute terror in her eyes. She is, that is, and now, it's called losing faith. Do you, it's wild. It's wild. It's wild. But here's the thing. Do you remember there being a backlash about Garbage Pail Kids? I, I don't, don't remember there being any controversy. I don't, but we might have been too young to get that news. Look, my mom wouldn't buy me anything where there was like flames around it and smoke because, you know, she thought like certain records had the devil on them. And, you sure. know, you know, uh, she really fell under the spell of that PTA nonsense that was happening. Yep. But, uh, but the fact that she bought me these things constantly, I'm like, there must have not been a whiff of smoke around these things. Right. Like, you know? Yeah, I I because otherwise she would have had him on lockdown. Now Teddy Ruxpin, yeah. we gotta get to him. Yeah, yeah. I never had one. Now now look, I'm I'm I, can we pull up his stats? He was when he dropped, he was just as in demand. If you don't know who he was, he was a talking bear that was completely interactive. He didn't just spout his own stuff, he was interactive, right? His eyes moved. Well, he, he was, did you put the cassette? He had his own cassette? He had a cassette in his back. He's sort of interactive. As interactive as you were back then. Yeah, no? it was I mean, like the cabbage patch didn't do anything. It was like you could, be, you could, it was like if you squeeze his hand, he'll say, I love you or whatever. You know what I mean? It was like stuff no, like that. No, no, but he, his eyes moved and he, he, he would bark. No, not bark. bark. I'm thinking there's another, there's another guy, there's another doll that had a cassette tape that talked on his own. Yeah, you want to know something crazy? What's My that? My sister, I, don't know, I thought it was a, do- a dog that had the tape as well. Maybe, maybe you're thinking of pound puppies? No. But maybe, I guess, let's call it the Teddy Ruxpin. My sister had one, right? I'm not kidding, man. Okay? We were in the house, and we heard... That's why I think it was a dog, because we heard like... (laughs) We're like, what the hell is that? And then he said something. I I should call my sister and ask what he said. He said something like weird. Like... No, don't. Something something weird like that, right? Something, Something like that was like... It was like three words, but it... It was ominous. Right. It might not have been meant to be ominous in its original intent, but it was something like, please help. Or something like something weird or like or like right. no more. Or something right. weird, right? And it went, and we're like, what the fuck? We, we were kids, we looked at you, we're like, what the hell? All right. And we went and looked, got the doll. <laughs> went and took it, opened it up. No don't batteries. say no. Ba- no, don't say that. No batteries. Say that. That. No batteries. The Teddy. Let me. This was system. now. This was the time. This is good backstory right here. This period was ripe with. This was a real trend right here. Yeah. Was were companion dolls. Yeah. Teddy Ruxpin was the first one that actually talked and stuff like that. This is. This is what Child's Play came from. This is what Chucky came 100%. from. 100%. We wouldn't this have is, him. This is what it's based on. It's, it, it is. I think it's literally based probably yeah, on close to Yeah, because him, yeah. that thing 
was so freaky. It was freaky, man. It's dead eyes. Should I give her a quick jingle just to see yeah. if she can... I, I want to make sure, because it might be worth it. It had dead eyes. It moved in a weird way. Steve, can you pull up video of... Oh, my God. Look at it after... Look. Yeah. It got old Jack with his eyes. Can you pull up a video of Teddy Ruxpin in motion on YouTube? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, listen, listen. Um, I have you on speaker and I'm doing my podcast right now. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so a question for you. Remember when we were little and I th I think it was a dog, but it might have been Teddy Ruxpin. And like you had it and it was when we lived um, in St. George and you had the back room. And it was like we heard the dog be like, Arr! or something like that. And yes, then we went. And dog used to talk on its own, <laughs> right? Yeah, God, was, really? it, was it a dog or was it Teddy Ruxpin? Yeah, it was a dog. It was called Wrinkles. <laughs> oh well, there you go. Okay, can you look up Wrinkles the dog? But remember when we went, <laughs> look at we that thing. It. Look remember, how scary that thing is. Remember when we heard it? Yeah, there he is. That's him oh. right there in the red overalls. Yeah. Remember when we heard it and then we went and looked and it had no batteries? Yes. What was it? Was it no batteries or no tape? No, it was no batteries. Well, the batteries were like rusted out of it or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it was, but it said something when I was laying down on my bed. It said something to like move my mouse or something like that. <laughs> move my mouse. Ah! And move I my mouse. Off my bed and I ran into your room. See? Oh my god! <laughs> it was like move my mouse. Oh my yeah. god! And we we're like, yo, what the hell? And then we looked at it. No battery. Oh, that's freaky. <laughs> All right, that's I, 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 I want to make sure I wasn't I mis wanted to misremembering. V, uh, tell us. Right, I love, there, love you too. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Is Bye. there a history of urban legends of Teddy Ruxpin's functioning without the batteries and stuff? Ooh, that's good. I bet you there is. Um, but this was this this was the period of companion dolls. Another one, right, was my buddy, my buddy, which Kid's Chucky sister. is directly oh, based no, on. He's my buddy. Yeah, he's my buddy. Uh, but what? my buddy, did, it's like a my buddy Teddy Ruxpin hybrid. What do you mean? Chucky's my buddy. He's not Teddy Ruxpin. He's my buddy. No, no, no. But my buddy didn't talk. Teddy Ruxpin right, talked. Right. They combined the two. We're saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, then, then there was also, remember My Pet Monster? Wait, you had it. How is Teddy Ruxpin talking without batteries? Remember My Pet Monster? Yeah. Yes. That was another one. With the chains? Yes. I used to wrestle with them. Uh, Teddy Ruxpin talks without batteries. It's old data. We weren't surprised nothing happened when we put in new batteries. We were surprised when we took the batteries out and it started talking. It's got to be that it maintains a charge or something. And even though you, the batteries are out, it's got some juice left in it. Well, that just made it no fun. <laughs> that's weird. That's yeah, weird. that's weird, though, because that's continually talking. Yeah. Um, yes. My buddy. What uh my buddy. My, my buddy. buddy. Wherever I go, he's he goes, gonna go. Yeah. My buddy. And then there was Kid Sis. Kid sister. Kid sister yeah. and me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God, this was a weird time. Every, every yeah. kid wanted Dude, a doll my to buddy, carry around. The my buddy and the uh, even more than the my pet monster. The my buddy, I practiced my wrestling moves on that thing. I, I was dropping Randy Macho Man Savage elbows on that guy <laughs> from the couch. <laughs> Did you ever accidentally hit the face and hurt your elbow? Nah. No? Because that I, I face I don't was recall. hard plastic. Yeah, it was like, it was like a cabbage. Yeah. All right, so we didn't, we should have, my buddy wasn't even in contention. Cabbage Patch is going to take that round. It is, it is. It What's is. the next battle? All right. We got two left. We got WWE wrestling figures versus Voltron. Well, I can't take the wrestling figures because I never had them. Yeah. I loved Voltron. I have been, sh I've been like since last year shopping for a, a, a Voltron, a vintage Voltron set. And you can't find it? No, I haven't found one to my liking. Okay. But I would love to have that on display. Now, Voltron, yeah. again, innovative. If you don't know what Voltron was, it was a series of galactic defenders whose spacecraft were tigers. Yeah. It was like these earthling, these like earth astronauts got contacted. I believe the story is right. By this intergalactic being that said, like, you know, you're the best of the best, uh, and we need you to pilot these uh, ships uh, in order to, to, to defend the, the, the galaxy from this evil being. I forget the guy's name, right? And there was two types. There was, the, there was a set of ships that were lions, robot, like m m m metal lions. I thought that was it. No. There was also the car Voltron, which is the guy... 
Uh, oh, I only know the line. The guy with the, the, the propellers on his front. I, I did not know that guy. That's Voltron 1, dude. That's oh. original Voltron was the cars. Whoa. Wait, so before Transformers? What do you mean? There was a... Because the concept of Voltron is No, no, that, I'm saying... No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is... See how it says Voltron 1 next to it? Like, that's, that's the original Voltron. And then the lion was Voltron 3. There's a 2... There's a number even, two that I don't even know what the wow, hell it is. So, but conceptually, are they kind of similar then to um, Transformers? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. No, it was still... Well, it was kind of like what Transformers did with the Constructicons. Was Voltron 1 and 2 popular? Because 3 blew everyone... I, I only know 3, even to this day. Well, the TV show, which Another I own... Another cartoon they had. Yeah, the yeah. cartoon which I own, yeah. uh, is the original series run, and it's both. There, there are car episodes and there are lion really? episodes, and it's different teams and whatever. And I will tell you something: as a kid, when you were just at the dealer's mercy, uh, nothing pissed me off more than was a car episode. It would make me furious. Yeah, we wanted the lions. Yeah, the lions. So there was a I big had fat, the lions. A set. big fat black lion who was the body. Yeah, and then you had the yellow and the blue, which were the legs, and you had the green and red, which were the arms. And by the way, the faces of the lions on the arms shot off. Yeah. Um, and it's basically you could use it as a line or then they would form one big thing to form Voltron. And if it if wasn't you, if enough, know, if it wasn't enough name that it. five lines, five animatronic, not animatronic, you know what I mean? Five robotic lions piloted by humans. If it wasn't enough that those five lions turned into a walking robot with wings that could fly, that robot also wielded a gladiator sword. Yeah. This is the most heavy metal thing yeah. ever invented that wasn't heavy metal. Like, right. I can't believe I don't see more Voltron t shirts and, and yeah, whatever. It's like, weird, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, look, I think Method Man name drops them, uh, from like Voltron, right? Um, yeah. But uh, going up against WWE, as much as I loved Voltron, WWE was also like the pinnacle of at least the first couple of series of them was was all I cared about. I had maybe mm -hmm. 35, 40 of them. I had the ring. I had the steel cage. And I would sit there, and I mean, I would do full storylines. Full storylines, battle royals. I mean, the ring made it a whole other thing. This is how how pitiful it was. When I when they first came out, I got a Hogan, and it was the only one I got. Like, I couldn't get more than one at a time, and they were in demand. And I, I took the Hogan out of the plastic, but kept the plastic which was molded to his body intact, and they made him fly, fight his plastic, <laughs> his plastic mold because I had nothing else to do, do it with. Then eventually I got my Randy, I got my Jake the Snake, I got my... Oh, my first ones were Bundy, I was is Hogan, Snooker was number two. Uh, then it was Big John Stud, Andre the Giant. It was like five or six. So WWF time. at this time... Yeah, that's the first one right there. Oh, WWF at this time... Was really Sheik, good. I had Sheik, was I really good at, at getting into businesses they had no business being in. Toy lines, ice cream bars, <laughs> Saturday morning cartoons. They were dipping their wick everywhere, and they were making it work somehow. Why which do you was feel like they had no business? It was this was this was a first, dude. There was never such thing as like re, like toy action. They made Star Wars style action figures. Like out of real people, like right. this. This was weird. Like it's it's it. They're fun, but it's weird. Adrian Adonis. Is that the first something like that happened? You think in your mind? I I don't remember there ever being. Oh, for me, that figures. was even a bigger selling point. These were real, you know. I mean, you know, it, it'd be like wrestling if there was a like, crossover until like Hulk Hogan, and then Hulk Hogan got to the kids, say prayers, right. eat vitamins, and then I think that opened up a whole nother world right there. Even like when they did starting lineup, which were the. Oh wow. <laughs> Just realized, oh, that starting lineup. But what I was going to say is, is they weren't really toys. They were figurines that you put up on your shelf. They were posed. Pitcher would be like this. Quarterback would be like this. Yeah. But they were amazing. Wide receiver, and they felt so you know, detailed. Yeah, you couldn't articulate them. Yeah. So my point is, is, is when they made figurines of other athletes in other sports, they were just that. They were figurines. Oh. The wrestling thing, this was odd. It was cool, but it's odd that they were like, we're going to make an actual toy play set. Yeah. And they kind of bounced, you know, you could because they were made of rubber. Yeah. And you just beat the hell out of them. They knew things. what they were doing. It was smart. I mean, I'm, I'm taking them over Voltron for sure. 
Uh, I'll take Voltron. I used to, oh my god! I mean, I love yeah. Vol, I love Voltron. I even had Adrian Adonis. They went deep in the collection after that. Um, you know, yeah, we have a lot of toys that we didn't get in there. Before I forget, there's one more battle. Here's the one toy from the '80s I have searched high and low for. I can't find it. I am dead serious. If anybody out there knows where one of these is, please hit me up. They made a they made a rubber. Uh, stretchy toy of Swamp Thing that was almost like a Stretch Armstrong. That's another one. Stretch Armstrong? Yeah. yeah Stretch Should we Armstrong do another Sweet 16 for the 80s? <laughs> we might need to. Want to do an 80s? Want to do an 80s? And then another, we'll do a 90s at another time. And then we'll make, I don't know, man. I feel, look, if, if, you, guys, if you guys are into this, because it's going to be a, a few weeks without food. But if, if you guys are into this, I mean, I feel like there's so much to cover. I know. There's still, and everyone, everyone has an opinion on this stuff. So yeah, um, there's still. What, what uh, do you think we should do? I don't know. Let's talk after. Okay. But but I hear you. I I I have the same dilemma rattling around in me. But well, anyway, this swamp thing. Yeah. If anybody knows this thing, not the plastic swamp toy toy thing, thing toys that came out when the cartoon came out. It is a excuse me rubbery stretchy green swamp thing doll. Let me know. Okay. But right. Real quick, last battle. We're going back to quintessential. Neutral 80s with Etch a Sketch versus Light Bright. I had both. I was way more fascinated with the Light Bright, if I'm being honest. I love the Etch a Sketch. I think they're both sold in variations today, to this day. I think that they're rebranded, like they're, they're branded I still. I can't and sold. explain why this is the case, but the Light Bright bummed me out for some reason. It was always this toy. It was always this toy. That when a friend had it, it was like half of the pins were missing. It was always like kind of turned upside out in a corner somewhere. You needed time with the light bright. You couldn't just, you couldn't be a flyby. You couldn't go to your friend's house and just start putting in pins. You needed to sit down. You need to let it simmer. You need to walk away. You need to look at it. You need to make adjustments. Yeah, that you know? And then when you finally flipped that switch and then you had your thing, you showed your parents. Hopefully they gave you a pat on the back. It. <laughs> I mean, look. Again, now that I'm older, would I love to have a light bright with a with an amazing design on it in my house that you just plug in? Yeah. How about this, babe? I would do that. I get a light bright, and we build it ourselves. We build the the Wu Tang symbol, put it right behind us on a light bright. <laughs> now we're uh, cooking with butter. Now I, I I'm not mad at it. Now that's a sketch. On the other hand, I still have one. Was, I have one of those in my house. But I'll tell you what. This is the first laptop. It was amazing. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> you you, you, was amazing. you Google the best uh, etch a sketch things, and you'll you'll be blown away. I was relegated to just steps, if I'm being honest. Steps, my name, steps, couple of boxes. You try you try to do something with a heart. You try to get cute and make make an oval or a curve. You look like you have yeah ch the shakes. There was no. I had a. I would always do. Um, there was an Intellivision game called Snafu. And it was basically the precursor to worm. And you you were a worm and you had to go around and you had to make sure you didn't run uh -huh. into your own tail, whatever. And I would recreate that as best I could with the etch sketch screen. Um But really, I mean you, I put an etch a etch a sketch in your hands right now. I give you twenty minutes? What are you handing me back? I know this is not nothing. I'm I'm genuinely asking. I don't know. <laughs> nothing good. Not a slide on etch a sketch. That's where I think etch a sketch is gonna see its demise. It's boundless limitations if you had a skill set and you were possibly like a young Bill Gates. Right. But to the lay boy and girl. But that's the beauty of the Etch-A-Sketch is you have two dials and you know it's possible. Right. And you try mm -hmm. and try and try. I would go at that thing over. It's a dangling and, carrot. Yeah. Whereas Light Bright... I, I was really lost with Light Bright. I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. I would, I, you'd make the clown on the front of the box, and then I was kind of like, all, all right, I guess. I guess yeah. I just have any interest in, in landscapes. You make boobs and stuff. Um, oh, that's like from the 50s, though. Um, <laughs> so Etch-A-Sketch, I think, is going to win that because I don't... I feel like Etch-A-Sketch, I see it... I think Light Bright is still available, but an adult is not borrowing a light bright where I still see, I could still see like myself an Etch-A-Sketch thrown on my, in an office where people, could, I don't know. I, I still feel like, etch, I feel Etch-A-Sketch has more staying power right now. And I think people are going to be voting, not just thinking of the 80s. So I think Etch-A-Sketch will probably take it. All right. But if I had to be alone in a room for a night and I had only one of them, I'd probably choose light bright. No, I Etch-A-Sketch still. Cause you, you lay in bed with it. You lay in bed. It's, it's, I'm it's, in bed with the light it's bright. a cozy. Me with a good time. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a cozy in the dark. Book. You lay in bed in the dark with a light bright. How cool is that? It also that was the other thing. The light bright always seemed vaguely dangerous to me. Like you know, was, the pins do seem dangerous. Yeah. Like, I even felt like I could choke on them. And I mean, but not, I feel like oh, I could choke I, on them now if I really. I wasn't got even into saying it. that. I felt like it was a fire hazard. Of some kind. <laughs> you know, you're pushing the pins into that surface. That there was always like a little heat coming off of it. You know, yeah. like which, by the way, speaking of heat, we didn't get to things like we. we they're not in this tournament. But like we said, we couldn't get everything, and we had to eliminate stuff like a speaking spell, Mr. Potato Head, an Easy Bake Oven, things like that. Well, if we do another 80s app, we will argue it. All right, guys. So we originally, we were going to end up going from the Sweet 16 to the uh, the Elite Eight, I think it's called. I don't even know. And, uh, and, and then we were going to go to the Final Four in this episode, but... It went. It went over, and we've been having fun. So we're gonna we're gonna stop here. We're gonna get the uh, the uh, results, humble pies of, of the these eight matchups, yeah. and then we will continue this into next week. All right, here we go. This is gonna be fun. I would like you guys to weigh in right before we do it each. All right, go. Um, where do you want to start? Let's let's, let's see the powerhouses for last. Right, hit me with oh, the etch. Sure, if yeah, yeah. hit yeah. me with the etch sketch light bright. Oh yeah, that's all right. Where, where are you guys going on that? I'm going etch sketch. You go yeah. Two for etch okay, What are you going on? Etch a sketch. I believe etch a sketch will you, win. But are you taking light bright? I like light bright. Because that's important for I the like win. light bright better. I think etch a sketch is going to win. Right. These are the toys. But that we're not, that's not always going to happen here. No, I know. But I'm just saying, let's yeah. make note of it where so Sal is team etch a sketch. Oh, you want to read a, a you want to want to save the uh, yeah. want to save the phones for the next yeah, episode? Yeah. That'll lead us into the perfect. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Etch a sketch versus light bright. We got a five. Ooh, close though. Not, not. Oof, far less of disparity than I thought there would be. 57.7 to etch a sketch. Light bright at 42.3. That is a win. And that's thousands. Uh, that's almost over 4,000 votes. So, For Team Joe. Team etch a sketch. Right, right, right. Okay, you're right. We need to, yeah. Yeah, that we have to keep. All right. WWE Voltron. I'm going WWE on this one. All right, one. I'm taking Voltron. What do we got? What do we got? That's re this is refreshed. Okay. Didn't yield as many votes. 3,000 votes. Well, it was a lot of polls we put What are you guys up. going here? I'm going WWE. Okay. The really? Video. I mean, it's it's a tough one, but that to me resonated more. And I I have let's put it to you this way. I have three of the five Voltron. I still have like forty wrestlers with the cage and the ring and all that stuff. <laughs> Although the ropes are completely destroyed now. I'm so shocked you can't find a good shape Voltron. I feel like that'd be easy to find. Um No, because they made it after with plastic too as well. No, that sucks. It's I had the metal one. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you could take a tooth out. That by the way, that paint, that that uh that sparkly paint on those things back then, I mean, had to be lead infused. Yeah, that's no? probably just switched <laughs> to plastic. Yeah. All right. Jesus God. Oh, that's a drubbing. Yeah. 3,000 votes. You got WWF <laughs> coming in at 71.4% uh, versus Voltron at 28.6. I, I thought that would oh, be the case. just went up again. Um, oh, it did? Yeah, it went yeah. to 71.7 to 28.3. Okay. So, WWF uh, figures handily uh, defeating Voltron. I think Voltron could have had a win depending on who they fa who it faced. Uh, I'm I I'm not surprised. Voltron was not as popular as 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 it was loved. Remember Let's put it that WWE. Way. I mean, it's people are still voting like with their brains today. I think. Well, that's true too. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to skew. All right. Let's go to say, we let go Barbie last. Is last. Yeah, that's got to be last. Uh, all right, Hot Wheels, My Little Pony. I took Hot Wheels. Over 4, Did you 000, take My Little Pony over 4, or no? Four thousand votes. I think Hot Wheels is gonna win. But are you taking My Little Pony as a team? No, I would take. I would have taken Hot Wheels. I have okay. tons of Hot Wheels. All right, the so then I had all that stuff. So, so then this counts. Well, it doesn't count. It it's doesn't a count. Right? Okay, we'll okay. figure it out. Let's see. Hot Wheels versus My Little Where Pony. Where you going? Hot Wheels. Two Hot Wheels. Where you going? Hot Wheels. Okay. Look. Oh my goodness. Wow. The bronies, I guess, are not taste buddies. <laughs> <laughs> they, in, the, in the Venn diagram of bronies and taste buddies, it is two halves. <laughs> With no God, eighty-eight point one to eleven point nine. Oh man, that's. I mean, they just literally. That was. That was basically a hit and run. A, a car Lord. just hit a pony and kept going. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Uh, Cabbage Patch Kids versus Teddy Ruxpin. I am Team Cabbage Patch. It's gotta be Cabbage. You're staying okay. It's gotta be. I, you know, are you? I mean, you're not, so you're not Team Teddy. You're Team Cabbage. cabbage. As well? Okay. Where are you guys going? Okay. I'll go Ted because I like the movie. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You got uh, thousands of votes there. Three thousand eight hundred votes. Sixty-eight point nine percent to the Cabbage Patch Kids mm -hmm. to thirty-one point one Teddy Ruxpin. Yeah. Not to not not for nothing. 
Cabbage Patch Kids was the number one by far in all of the eighties doll and line. They said it, it, yeah. it changed the toy industry. Yeah. So Teddy Ruxpin, I think, really that was a, a, a good fight by Teddy Ruxpin. I think to, to not, still get thirty one percent. Not bad. He deserves. He deserved a little bit more. I mean, the the, the goddamn thing talked. You yeah, know, but yeah. uh, what can he do? All right. Are, we, are these the last two? No. Oh. This is a huge one. What Wait, else we got? let's save this yeah. and Lego Barbie for last. What else we got in there? All right, here we go. The, uh, are those the last three? It is? We did five already? Let me see. I have a paper right there. Let's see, good. No, we didn't do Rubik Simon either. We got oh, Rubik, yeah. We got Rubik Simon, pull Lego up, Barbie, Transformers, G.I. Joe. And let's go to Transformers, G.I. Joe. <laughs> Man, I mean, if I was a betting man, I wouldn't even know what to do. Now, I'm Team Transformers. You're Team G.I. Joe? Uh, no. I'm, You're talking I'm, about you sliding them down strings. <laughs> yeah, I know. But as far as like, as far as like, di like what, I had better memories with G.I. Joe. Like more like, I went further with them, but like Transformers was more coveted. Okay. Me. All right. So I don't, I, I get, look, I can go either way on any of these. Do I, who do I think is going to win? I think Transformers will probably win. All right. But, um. Do you want, do you, for the sake of like, I don't know where we're netting out here. When well, we right recede, now you have one when win we recede, and I have one we can, win. When we recede, it's really going to matter like yeah. when we recede. Yeah. So if, if for example, if, if it doesn't add up right, we could just rechoose. Yeah. Well, we each have a win so far. Oh, we do. But this is more exciting if one of us, if we're on different sides, that's all. All right. Uh, but today was a tough one to do that because it was a million toys that we all loved. Okay. Let's see what wins here. I think Transformers is going to take it. I mean, G.I. Joe is a real American hero. Do you, do you the last chance? You want to take it? I think Transformers is going to win. People are just it's razzle dazzle. But do you want to take GI Joe? Uh, <laughs> do you want to roll the dice here and take it as your? No, I I your, should go with what I think. think you might okay, win, yeah. Transformers. Oof, yes, handily sixty eight point two. Have gone there too. I was going to go GI Joe. I played yeah. with those more. Yeah. All right. So Six, you got Transformers yeah. uh, winning there. Sixty eight point two. Sixty eight. Yeah. Where's that? There it is down there. Sixty-eight point one percent Transformers to GI Joe thirty-one point nine percent. That's at the fifty-three hundred votes. Holy God! Oh man! So okay. Transformers really took. That oh, look one. at this right here. We got the two biggies. Let's okay. hit it. Let's, he Man versus Star Wars. Yeah, I think Star Wars is going to win. No, um, but you're taking Star Wars. I think it's going to win. I, I or agree are you taking with you on He Man? So I, we're both He Man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Where I, you guys going? Yeah. I will go He Man. Okay. I'm curious how this Drum is going to go. On this one, I don't know. Holy oh God! My God. Oh, Seventy percent to Star you're Wars. You're not going to beat Star Wars. It lives. It's as popular today as then. You can't yeah, say that for He-Man. It's he tough. You, we should have seeded He-Man against like Voltron or something like that. Well, it doesn't matter if He-Man lost that bad right there. He, he would eventually face face him anyway. Uh, face Star. That's a shame. I wanted that, that was a to big go. loss. Can I get those numbers again, please? Just real quick. That was seventy point one percent Star Wars to twenty nine. 0.9% He-Man. God bless you, He-Man. I but, wanted He-Man uh, to go all the way there. All right, folks. I'm Team Barbie. Sal is Team Lego. Right now, we've each won a battle in this. We've each got a one today. win today. I would be Team Barbie on this. You were Team... What are you talking about? You went on and on about the Legos. Oh, but you're talking about like what I like better or what I think is going to win? No, what you, I, you, I guess in my head I fractured those two yeah, things. Yeah, you you fighting I was for, talking you, about my experience, but yeah, if you I were, was betting who would win, I would say I would say Barbie. I was saying I'll take Barbie as I'm saying okay, Barbie's the Lego better Tay toy, and you actually loved Legos growing up. Okay, the only thing is if, if Barbie is so big, it, she's going to need a contender. Uh, well, listen, this is the way a bracket works. What are you going to do? <laughs> can't say to Jordan, okay. you, you can't play unless somebody as good as you play. Yeah, you know, I mean, I you know, I. I yeah, I mean, I, yeah, okay. I'll take Lego because I like All Lego right. too. But I did, I, look, I did have way more. This. I mean, I we had breakups. <laughs> My sister, we had, we had, we had, we had <laughs> clicks, cattiness. You, I mean, might I did it all. you might win this with Lego. Lego was massive. Nah, Barbie's gonna take. Well, you never know because people are voting right now. Okay, here we go. This is huge. Sixty-one hundred votes. Barbie, Le of course. Lego. Lego, Lego, Barbie, Barbie. Lego versus oh, Barbie. Oh my god! Are you kidding wow. me? Wow. Wow. What? You don't have any female what? listeners. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. This is insanity. Wow. How is that possible? This is insanity. Does our audience skew male? 
I see tons of women in the yeah, in the too. comments. Yeah, I see just as much. Guys, <laughs> 6,300 votes here. <laughs> we thought this was literally the battle. We think it's because of the movie and all the controversy over the movie. Just putting that out there. The movie voting was huge. Like, we're talking about the toy. <laughs> if people are not voting. Yeah, the movie was huge. Yeah, Academy they Award. They hated it. Winning, no, nominated. Not really. Really? I thought it was going to. So, I think so. Guys, I thought I saw Ryan. I am never one to pull this card. This is sexism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Legos, Legos is um unisex. Apparently it's not. Apparently Guys, all Legos, the men. Well, maybe that's why though. It. Maybe that's why. Legos is is not guy or boy or girl. No, yes, very it, sweet. it's guy shit. I don't know one I don't, you know girls who play with Legos. Yeah, it's probably too no. <laughs> Okay, well, let me tell you this, guys <laughs> listening, the people listening. Lego won in the biggest margin of the entire Sweet 16, where we thought that this would be a powerhouse battle, 86.2% to Barbie's 13.8%, which, which might be, and we have to go to the books, but it's probably in the top five biggest wins, landslides of all, of all history. Yeah. I was just going well, to ask what the biggest know, one was. Yeah. I knew one girl that played with Legos. She works in a hardware store now. <laughs> and coaches a softball team. The, uh, <laughs> and I knew one guy that played with Barbies. And uh, he's sitting right here. <laughs> um, wow, dude. Well, uh, so we have I to, can't we, believe I just forced you to take Legos. <laughs> <laughs> we have to, so we will reseed for next week. And next oh, week. Wait, we'll, wait, wait, wait. We forgot uh, Simon. Uh, Rubik's oh, cube. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Let's go to Simon and Rubik's cube. It uh, was in the original Simon. post. The original post. Rubik's Simon. <laughs> I love that. I didn't see it on here though. So why is it not? Did you post it? I might have forgotten. Did it connect? Did it? Did it? Was it on the end of that? Show more. Show more. Choose one. <laughs> you forgot. Wait, did you? No. I thought I saw you type it in. No, I forgot it. Oh, wait. Yeah, look. The, I choose. One of the first comments is, I choose, did you forget yeah, something? Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So why don't, I post, right. why don't I do it now? Okay. And then we'll just tell that winner next week. We'll, we'll okay. So we'll be back next week to discuss the Elite Eight. eight the Elite Eight. We'll reseed. We'll give you, we'll reseed and then we'll give you the results of Simon. Uh, yeah, and we'll go Rubik. to the phone just to see what people said about these things, too. Yes, we're going to do that, too. All right. All right part two coming up. Yes.